Welcome to the Afterspin. Additional comments from our panelists just available on our website. We want to ask you, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show, but you didn't? John Hood, I'll start with you. Well, I mentioned in the close in the Tell Us Something We Don't Know segment about the Charlotte mayor's race that it's interesting, and it is. Uh, part of the reason it's, it is interesting is because Dan Clodfelter, who a lot of people know all around the state for being a former powerful state senator in, in Raleigh, uh, representing the Charlotte area, he, when he took the job, he took it because the previous occupant uh, turned out to be a felon, which is a bit of a problem. So Dan goes into the race, or into the office, saying he would not run to be elected outright as the mayor of Charlotte in 2015. Then he turns around and decides, in fact, he is going to run. Uh, so I think he's got a challenge there, and his main, one of his main challengers, Jennifer Watson Roberts, is the former uh, chair of the county commission in Mecklenburg, has essentially been running for mayor for a couple of years now, and plus you have two other city council members in that race in the Democratic primary. It's very interesting. And on the Republican side, you have Scott Stone, who was the nominee in 2011, and Ed Peacock, who was the nominee in 2013. So uh, not, it's sort of unlike, it's an unlikely set of competitive primaries. Again, I'm not sure what the general election looks like. They take their politics, local politics, pretty seriously in Mecklenburg. And also. we have, in fact, it's a mistake not to pay attention to municipal politics now that we know you can, in fact, elect mayors as governors. <laughs> yes. so, even if, so even if you don't live in a particular big city, a Raleigh or Greensboro or Charlotte, stay tuned because maybe in the future you'll see them again. Coming soon to the governor's mansion maybe. near you. Becky, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Um, when we were talking about the General Assembly and getting down to budget work and all that, one of the things that I've really thought a lot about, and um, Dan, you'll appreciate this, um, what we have is a little bit different situation in personalities that are going to be negotiating this. We now have two lawyers at the heads, the heads of the table that are going to be negotiating this. You know, for years we, in the Senate, we had Mark Bass Knight, who was a businessman. Um, of course, we've had Joe Hackney in the House, but this is a this is a different dynamic than we have seen before. And then, of course, in the governor's mansion, we don't have a lawyer; we have somebody who is a manager. And so, just the dynamics of the personality. I think are really going to be interesting to watch how these negotiations go forward and, you know, just the, the dynamics of the whole thing. Let's hope it's public enough so that we can We can watch, watch that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dan, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Uh, probably more about these budget negotiations. Uh, one of the other big breaking stories of this week will be <clears throat> that the administration, the federal, the, the, the White House, reached an agreement with Iran. Uh, Surely, if we can negotiate with Iran, we can figure out how to sort of budget out in our General Assembly. But I'm, I'm not really hopeful that everything's going to fall in the right places. I'll be interested to see how the person. Our federal government on. doesn't seem to have been doing very well at that <laughs> process. Chris, what do you wish you to see it? Well, we mentioned uh, Governor McCrory uh, kicking up the rhetoric a notch against the General Assembly, and we talked about the budget negotiations. There's an interesting story this past uh, week, uh, weekend ago, in the Wilmington Star News, uh, budget, State Budget Director Lee Roberts. Uh, told the newspaper uh, that he didn't expect Governor McCrory's bonds to be on the ballot in the form that the governor wants them. The governor's going around the state still demanding two bonds, one for infrastructure, one for transportation. Uh, budget, uh, uh, Lee Roberts says, what we'll see is a scaled down one bond issue, mostly infrastructure, maybe with a couple of transportation projects uh, on it. I think that's all getting wrapped up in the budget negotiations as well. I thought it was sort of a big story that the rest of the media missed. Uh, I missed it, as a matter of fact. All right, well, thanks for watching the Afterspin. We'll have more video all during the week on ncspin.com.